Yes, I'm Beth Munro, para taekwondo athlete. I'm 30 years old and I'm from Liverpool. Welcome to my sofa Thank you. and congratulations because you just won your gold medal. I did, I did. I mean, How was today for you? Today has been an ecstatic day. We've got more points towards Paris, which is the main aim. Bit of a Bit of a weird day in regards to only having one fight. Yeah. Because I'm used to getting up early and getting in the mindset, um, ready for comp starting at nine or ten. Yeah, because what time were you here today? I got here just after two o'clock. So I had a good few hours in bed, yeah. had a little chill, had a cup of tea, um, had a shower, and then, yeah, after midday, went and got a coffee and got the bus over. And you got ready for your only match yeah. of the day, <laughs> yeah. basically, and yeah. you won. Yes. So you now had the medal ceremony as well. Mm -hmm. You've got it on you right now. I'm a lovely teddy. <laughs> exactly. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. I would love to deep dive a little bit with you in how you got into taekwondo because I've been told that your goal was always to go to the Paralympics. Yes. But not with taekwondo. No. So I did. It was such a fast track journey in mm. regards to when I started. I was tr training in javelin. Yeah. Um, and then the guy Anthony Hughes, fantastic man. He then said one day, oh, do you fancy a bit of Taekwondo? And I'd never fought a person or kicked a person in my life. So honestly. how, why did he come up to you and say, would you fancy that? He said to me, he said, oh, you look quite athletic. And I do do sports, I do yeah. netball. And I was like, oh, yeah, I do. He went, oh, do us a favour. He said, would you throw this ball across a gym? And I was like, a bit of a strange request. <laughs> but I'd done it and it must have been really good. Because yeah. he said to me, he said, if you come down to Cardiff once a month, I could potentially make you a Paralympian. And I was like, so I had to Google him. I Googled him just to make sure he <laughs> yeah, knew yeah, was a bit dodgy. Yeah, and um, he is, he said, well, obviously he was who he said he was. And then I went down to Cardiff and started training in Javelin. So how did that transfer to Taekwondo go? Because you he, said you've never kicked or punched anyone. No, never been in a fight in my life. He just said, let's go try it. And I'm one of them people who will give anything a go. Yeah. And walked in. Coaches down there were fantastic. Taekwondo Cymru. And again, they must have saw something in me when I had a little kick of the pads. Yeah. And then it just spiralled from there. And then Taekwondo overtook Javelin. At the beginning, when you went to Cardiff, did you practice both? Or yes. So I'd do Javelin on a Friday and yeah. Taekwondo over Saturday. So and then I'd go home on the Sunday. From Cardiff to Liverpool? Yes, it was a commitment. I but, was going to say. Yeah, but it was just before COVID. Uh -huh. And then COVID hit. Javelin had kind of, because Taekwondo could be done on Zoom, yeah. in a sense. Mm -hmm. Javelin kind of took a back burner. So when did that point for you come where you thought, this is it, I'm going to go for the Taekwondo Paralympics? I think because I'd had more experience, more exposure. Mm -hmm. So the Zooms, for example. That made it more difficult. Yes, whereas Javelin, it was a lot more difficult to do the one-to-ones. Yeah. So it was just a little bit more experienced in it. And it just took over the Javelin aspect. So I was like, OK, let's put all the eggs in one basket. Let's go for Taekwondo. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean to say I couldn't try Javelin in the future. <laughs> you're so good at any sport again. <laughs> I mean, you've got the gold now in Taekwondo, so would yes. that be anything you're open to or willing to try in the future? I'd try anything. Really? Honestly, if, if, someone's, if I try it and I'm good at it and someone comes up to me and goes, oh, you've got potential, I'd try anything. But at the moment, obviously, I'm focused on Taekwondo. Yeah. In two years' time, you went from a never kicking someone ever in your life mm -hmm. to winning a silver medal. At the Paralympic Games, the biggest stage for para-athletes. That's such a crazy and cool story, though. That was my first ever comp as well. No. When I say first ever comp, I had to go to qualifiers, which of means course. I had to win that event, and that was only one fight. So, so you played I, one fight? I did one fight at a qualifying event. That was my first ever fight. Mm -hmm. Not a national one, not a little one in Liverpool. It the was qualifiers, qualifiers for the Games. Paralympics. And I won it. I won that fight and got the gold ticket. And then Tokyo. What went, tell me through what went through your mind when that happened. It was crazy. I was all I had to keep repeating to myself was, "Beth, you have to win this one fight." Hey. <laughs> <laughs> You've Fantastic. got fans all over. The Georgian well. guys are fab. <laughs> um, yeah, I just had to keep repeating to myself, "One fight, Beth. Come on, one fight, and you're going to Tokyo. One fight, and then I went out." And I don't know whether I made a record at GB for the highest scoring game, mm -hmm. like Olympic and Paralympic. It was a very high scoring game. It was in the 60s. Yeah. So done it and then went the games. And that was the first ever Taekwondo competition. I went out on my first fight, won it. And you know when you think, oh, am I in the right sport? Because I've only had one, two fights. And then I got to the quarters, beat world number two. And I was like, 
OK, I think I'm in the right sport. Then I got into um, to the semi-finals um, and it was world champ, uh, a fantastic girl from China. And I'd come off that and having known I'd secured at least a silver or a gold mm. and I'd made history as the first GB para-athlete to That's medal in taekwondo. Mind blown. Insane. Blue. So on the plane home from Tokyo to Great Britain back, yeah. what goes through your mind at that point? The fact that you've gone out and done the job and you've, you've made your nation proud. Yeah. You, you've made history again. It's just fantastic to say, but a bit surreal at the same time. Are you already looking forward to 2024 Paris? Yes. We, we don't find out until we, we qualify, until the end of December. Yeah. However, I'm in good stead. There's a good few points up for grabs in the next few competitions, but hopefully if I do well at them, then I qualify at the end of December and then I've, I'm definitely going the games. Well, I wish you all the best Thank of luck you. there and I hope you do just as well as you did here today. Thank you very much. Congratulations again and good luck with everything. <laughs> Thank you.